deferring was not on the table guys deferring was not on the table i'm just like okay maybe we should go back to the dream we had why why are you hating <laughs> like it's just because you don't want to go there why should you settle when you've been called for greater like what other results would you like Welcome back to my YouTube channel. If it's your first time here, hi, my name is Ashley and I've got the rich I don't know, right? <laughs> You're a returning subscriber. Thank you so much, Team Esther, for coming back. Quite a few people have been asking me, what did you do to like come to the UK, go to an Ivy League school? I don't think my uni is Ivy League, but I think it is. I don't know. I don't think it is though. But like, it's a, it's a top rated uni. So like, someone asked me like, what did you do to get there? What is it? Like your uni application process? So I was just like, you know what, let me just make a video about it because someone might need the help in the future so they might as well just make the video, you know what I'm saying? My uni application process was horrendous. It wasn't friendly, it wasn't cute, it was the worst because I took two years just to come for university. Application process begins. When I thought about going to university, I really wanted to come to Europe so bad. That was my dream, to come to Europe. So when I was told that you can't come, you can't go to a European university, that is not on the table, I, was, I wasn't happy, you know? I wasn't happy, but at the same time, I was given an ultimatum, which was doable. I was told you can go to South Africa, then you do your masters in Europe yeah you can't do undergrad in europe so i was like it's okay it's cool right as long as i'm gonna come to europe at the end of the day <laughs> so um, i applied to south africa i applied to uct Rhodes, vits right those are the unis i was gonna apply to because i was already late for the university of pretoria i was applying soon after i got my as results i applied i used my as results to apply so i applied my as results i didn't go through the vits application because vits they were asking for like 700 rands i was just like mm. That's too much money. <laughs> I settled with Rhodes and UCT. I got two conditional offers from UCT and from Rhodes. And then when that happened, I had to choose which one I wanted. When I got the conditional offer from UCT, Rhodes was already asking me about matriculation exemption. And that is something that university is supposed to help you with, but they wanted me to do it on my own. So I was just like, you know, what, let me just stick to like UCT. And since I genuinely like loved the aesthetic of Cape Town, I was like, I'm gonna go for that university, right? So when that happened, UCT told me, you can use your conditional offer to get a visa for that. I then went ahead and applied for my student visa, which was granted. The visa process was already like treacherous. It had so many things that were just so unnecessary. Okay, they weren't necessary, but it had so many things that I genuinely felt like this was a lot, but I got it done and then I got my visa. So January approaches now. I've got my visa, I'm happy, I'm, on, I'm so excited. I've gone, grown to accept that I'm going to Cape Town. You know, I'm happy, I'm joyful, and all of that stuff. Like, I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna get down. I'm gonna be at the beach and all of that stuff. Results come, um, and I send them my results, and they're like, we can't take you. So now I'm like, what do you mean you can't take me? And they're like, we can't take you because you do not meet the requirements of what we need for a law degree. In my head, I'm like, what other results are they? Because I had an A star, an A, and a B. Like, what other results would you like? Would you want me to have all three, all straight A's? Because I know for a fact that not everyone in that um, degree got straight A's. Like, that's that's a fact, you know. So I'm like, what other? They they made it so hard. And bear in mind, I already paid my school fees, my tuition, everything, accommodation, everything was paid. I had my visa, everything. I was ready to leave the country. And they're like, we can't take you. So now I'm just broke at this point i'm in shambles because i'm like what is this supposed to mean this is the place i'm meant to go and you're telling me you don't want me no more how do you give someone a conditional offer and then you take it away like when the results are the same what other conditions were they right besides the results so now at this point i'm just like i'm done <laughs> my life is over like there's no other plan b they, this was my plan b there's no other plan i don't have a plan c i don't know what's gonna happen now 
I was tired at this point I was tired and everyone was telling me no rejection is redirection that exactly is what I want to tell you right now rejection is redirection because if I went to that uni if I went to that country I wouldn't be here right now it may be hard to swallow but sometimes God will ruin everything so that you can do bigger better plan that he has for you because sometimes we we apply with our own knowledge with our own understanding but you know how in Proverbs it says, lean not onto your own understanding. We try to like do things that we think is best for us, yet it's not because you feel like that's the best that you could ever get, but there's better, you know, there's greater. Essay was already done. Like I was, I couldn't go to Essay no more. So I'm like, okay, let me try Namibia. <laughs> I tried Namibia, right? So I applied to Namibia and I'm literally filling in my details. I'm trying to press submit and it's like website not found so now i'm telling my parents like this is what's happening they're like it's just because you don't want to go there that's why i'm like no like just look at it like look at what's happening it's refusing for me to like send in my application right that was already another sign that don't go there right but i was just a bit adamant i was a bit stubborn so i was not listening to their signs i was not paying attention no more and then I'm sending in the application and then it's like page not found. So I'm like, what? So I go to my parents and I'm like, the page is not found. And they're like, oh, you just don't want to go. They just say so. And I'm like, no, I genuinely am willing to actually go there now. I've already swallowed my pride. Okay. I've already swallowed the big, great plans I had. You know, I'm willing to go there, but it's not allowing me to. So I'm just like, okay. You know what like i try everything i can and my parents actually like contact people they're like oh hell like they send me stuff but it's not working and i'm like you know what maybe just maybe god just doesn't want me to study in africa you know just maybe but i don't know i i, I just had a, like a weird thought i was like just maybe this place this continent is not for me educationally so I'm just like, you know what, let me let like let me leave Namibia alone. So I applied to New Zealand. I applied to New Zealand. Before I even applied, they asked for weird things. They asked for like bank statements with over like 30k. And then I'm like, they asked for so many things, right? So I'm just like, okay, no, this one is not working as well. I tried New Zealand. Before I even sent the application, they asked for, there was this whole list of requirements just to before you apply. And I was like, what? Right, so I literally like ignore New Zealand as well. I'm like, there's no way like you can expect me to fill in everything in time and the deadline is pushing, right? So I ignore New Zealand and I'm like, let me try Netherlands, you know, because I have a family friend who's there and they're like, oh, come to Netherlands. So I'm like, you know, let me just give Netherlands a shot, right? And bear in mind when I was applying to Netherlands, I was applying for e European and international law, right? So I apply to Netherlands, I get a conditional offer and I'm like, oh my God, I got a conditional offer to Netherlands, right? Then my boss, that time I was only at a law firm, my boss was like, don't go there. So I'm like, why? Why are you hating? <laughs> why don't you want me to go there? It's like, you can't do a master's degree as an undergrad. You won't be able to practice law, right? So I'm like, you're just hating. It's like, you, it's like that's a special like degree you specialize in it after you have done an lb honors degree you can't like do one module as a degree and expect to practice the whole law like the law itself it's not possible even especially if you want to come back to them and practice so i'm just like bummed about it because i'm like now i can't even go to the uni i wanted to go to because like the more the degree i chose is not compatible with what i want to do in the future now netherlands is off it's off the board and also netherlands asked for weird bank statements like ridiculous amounts it was also the uni i chose so i'm just like i don't understand what's going on i'm just like you know what i think it's the time i have a conversation with god maybe i should reevaluate everything maybe i'm doing something wrong maybe just maybe maybe i'm being naive maybe i'm being stubborn maybe i'm praying so much and i'm not listening maybe we should go back to the dream we had and you know re because i genuinely wanted to come to the uk since i was in high school i really wanted to come study in the uk so bad but like so many things there were so many obstacles so many redirections because my parents were saying another thing life was saying another thing you know but i wasn't listening to what god was saying the whole time i'm just like okay now i'm going to try this uk thing so 
I start with Yukas. If you don't know about Yukas, Yukas is like an online platform where you pay a, like a certain amount of money, like 30 pounds, and you can apply to five universities, if I'm not mistaken. And you just fill in, you just put your personal statement, your results, everything, and it just sends the same application to five universities, you know. I got rejected. <laughs> I got rejected. I was so hurt about it because they even asked, called me for an interview and everything. I got rejected. Another rejection. No, I guess you got two rejections and three conditional offers. The condition was based on the 3K deposit that UK universities usually ask for. So with all that happening, there were so many like obstacles when it came to you. You just wasn't you guys wasn't the problem i was just the problem i was like you know what let me also try an attempt to apply to directly to universities you know so i do that and i remember getting an email like a scholarships position thing and my uni was there so i'm like oh you guys are getting our scholarships wow what an opportunity so i applied to my uni directly not to you guys directly to my uni so you can actually consider like applying directly to unis if they if they have the portals for that but if they need you to use you guys you can also still use you guys right so i applied directly to my uni and they gave me an offer so when they gave me a conditional offer then they also sent me the scholarship thing like you can apply for a scholarship so i applied for the scholarship and i got a 25 percent scholarship right that was great that was all right right i applied for the scholarship then they asked for the deposit which i paid right then now i had an unconditional offer everything was settled i was it was settled that i was coming to the uk to nottingham Trent university ntu basically then when that happened now it was the visa process now the visa process was the worst process i was late for my visa and the bank statement the 28 days everything like that was I was just behind in every i tried to do this visa thing it fails right my visa is late i like it's like september i haven't even applied for my visa i contact this uni my uni and i tell them my situation and they're like we can't help you with any of this you can't even do online you can't come you can't come this year you have to defer i did not want to def deferring was not on the table guys deferring was not on the table that was the worst thing that i ever wanted to defer like bear in mind this whole time i'm praying i'm trusting god i'm like i have a bit of doubt but i'm trusting god i'm like god i place this in your hands like god have mercy but then i was just like you know what whatever happens happens i'm just like god you know bring me this far to leave me rejection is redirection i'm just like you know what everything happens for a reason at this point i'm relying on romans 8 to 8 all things work together for good right i defer because now i defer they're like because you've deferred you've lost your scholarship <laughs> i'm like wow that is amazing you you defer you get a place you defer and you lose your scholarship that is just the best thing that could ever happen to you ashley that is the best thing at that point i'm like god you're amazing <laughs> but i was being sarcastic about it i was like god you're so amazing you gave me a place you gave me a scholarship and then i lose everything wow yeah great but then i did not understand i did not see the bigger picture this year comes along and now they're like you have to apply for this college here now i have to rewrite a whole essay because i forgot the one i wrote the previous year when i got the 25 percent because i'm like you know what let me just try and get the 25 percent again at least i'm a settle but god is like baby you're not settling why should you settle when you've been called for greater right that's what happens sometimes we settle for things because we are willing to get anything that we any little blessing any little small great thing we're willing to settle for that but god is telling you that i've got something greater you know why should you settle when i've called you for greater things for a greater purpose for a greater calling when i've chosen you i've anointed you i've sanctified you why should you settle i applied for my scholarship guys and guess what i get a 50 percent scholarship i was just like god i knew it i believed in you <laughs> i was like i believed in you lord i believed in you like i knew you could do it i also felt stupid because i was just like all the stress for nothing <laughs> like if you knew that this was gonna happen you wouldn't be have stressed so much you didn't have lost weight the way you did it wasn't necessary now i'm here when i tell you that sometimes when i tell you rejection is redirection if i didn't get that rejection from uct would i be here 
like if I got into, if Namibia accepted my university, would I be here? If New Zealand and Netherlands did not give me weird, did not give me weird requirements, would I be here? And when I'm here, I feel like I belong. I know for a fact that if I'd gone to UCT, if I'd gone to Namibia, if I go, if I go to any other country, I wouldn't have felt like I belong. But here, I feel that I'm needed here. I belong here. I'm meant to be here. And that is one thing I want to encourage you guys as you're applying for your uni, lean on God's understanding. Sometimes you may have a certain plan or a blueprint of how you want your life to plan out. But also don't forget the one who created you and your life. Ask, consult God. Ask him, what do you want for my life? Because sometimes you have a certain blueprint. I, guys, I write everything. I wrote this is what I'm gonna do. This is what I'm gonna do. You know, when I arrive in Cape Town, this is the content I'm gonna make. Oh my, I had so many plans, guys. I had so many plans. I tell you, this is the content. But within that, I knew for a fact that this is not where I was meant to be. I could feel it. But I was just like, I'm, I'm willing to settle for anything because at least I have something to hold on to. His plans are not ours, and we should be able to align our plans with his so that everything is clearer. When, when something that happens that you not aware that you did not plan or anticipate happen, you do not have to stress the way I did because it wasn't necessary. Like the chaos, the, 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 the crying, the tears. If you watched my uni prep vlog, you saw that I was crying. I was so broken, like, cause so many things were happening in such a short space of time and I was just tired at that point. I was like, <sighs> I was so angry at God. And when I tell you, you don't have to go through all that you really don't have to, you don't have to stress when God has plans to prosper you, not to harm you, to give you a hope and a future. You not you do not have to stress when all things work together for good. Really, you don't have to. You just have to trust and lean not on your own understanding, but His. And trust me, wherever you're meant to go, you go. But you just have to like trust. Also understand a certain season you're in because I didn't understand the season I was in. I'm so grateful for the gap year I took because baby i was not wise i was not aware i did not have discernment the way i do now so if i had come this side last year lord knows what already have happened anyways thank you guys so much for watching don't forget to like comment share and subscribe and i'll see you in the next one mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.